Hey everyone, my name is Alexander and welcome to the very first video of a series where I'm going to be exploring what is science and how does it actually work in the real world. So if you've been wondering to yourself what would it actually be like to be a scientist and what would you actually do, then today is your lucky day because I have somehow convinced my friend Mairead, who is a cognitive neuroscientist here at Cambridge, to essentially walk us through a typical day that you do in research. Yes. So welcome Mairead, how's, how's it gone? Good, thank you. <laughs> Excited for this. Um, so what exactly is your position here at Cambridge? Okay, so I'm a second year PhD student at the Behavioural and Clinical Neuroscience Institute as part of the Department of Psychology and I work under Professor Trevor Robbins. Awesome, okay. And what research are we going to be doing today? Okay, so our lab is looking at the neural correlates of OCD. So we have a whole day planned out for you with different Ooh, <laughs> interesting. Okay. different types of studies that are looking at the brain basis of OCD and compulsive behaviour. Okay, so and I'm going to be a participant right in your research today. Like you're gonna be literally doing experiments on my brain. Correct. Awesome. Yes. Well we don't have a whole bunch of time because we've got to get to the lab, so yeah, let's <laughs> let's get to get to it. Okay. What exactly are we doing now? <laughs> Today we're using multimodal imaging techniques such as mm -hmm. MRS and EEG and also yeah. behavioural methodologies in order to get a better understanding of the physiological, the behavioural and the neural mechanisms which underpin compulsions in OCD. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right now you're going to begin the behavioural part of the study and this involves computerised tasks which will measure important psychological mechanisms which are involved in the manifestation of OCD. So when I was doing these computer tasks, it almost felt like one of those IQ tests so would you be able to tell from that how smart I am or not really? <laughs> not really, we're not really focusing on IQ here but what we are looking at are psychological mechanisms which are important in the manifestation of OCD and from this so we're going to have a look at how you perform in these computer games and compare that to a group of people with OCD and then down the line relate that to the other tests that you're doing today which are neuroimaging, so we can relate the behavior to what is controlling that in the brain. All right, so now? what are we doing now? Okay, so next moving on to um, the imaging part and um, we're interested in looking at the neural mechanisms that are different in OCD versus people who don't have OCD. Yeah. So the type of scan that we're doing is um, MRS. So you're going to be put, put me in a big, big magnet yeah. and you're going to take pictures of my brain essentially. Is that, is that a fair? S essentially, yeah. So we're trying to characterise potential brain differences in people with OCD um, and comparing those to people without OCD. So the type of scan that we're doing today is called MRS. So just to be clear, so this uh, technique is like 100% safe, right? There's like no need to worry, there's no possibility it could ever harm you, right? Yes, there's no adverse effects, it is non-invasive, there's no radiation and it is powered by a strong magnet so it's a big magnetic field and you're essentially going to go inside the scanner and that's how we use, that's what we use to create the image of your brain. Perfect. Okay, cool. I have to get changed, right? Yes. yes. Cool. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to give you some 
not very fashionable, but very comfortable okay. like scrubs. Well, it's it's how you wear it, right? So it's how you wear it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. How do I look? Yeah, great. <laughs> Ready for science. <laughs> <laughs> so what exactly are you measuring in this massive experiment with this seven million pound machine? I mean, it's got to be good for something, right, if it costs seven million pounds. So what <laughs> is it actually measuring in this case? So we're trying to characterize the potential different neural mechanisms of compulsive behavior in people with and without OCD and we're using a brain imaging technique called MRS, which is, stands for Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy. And here we can learn a great deal about how the brain works by looking at the flow of chemicals to different parts of the brain. And by analyzing the concentration of different neurochemicals in the brain, we can understand possible chemical imbalances and acquire information for novel treatments. So today we're particularly interested in the neurochemicals GABA and glutamate and how they work in tandem and how the what is the difference between someone who has OCD and someone without OCD and if there's different chemical balances. Mm -hmm. Okay, so potentially uh, if you were to compare my brain and the levels of those concentrations of those chemicals to uh, a brain of a person with OCD, then you might see differences. And from that, you would get a basis to really start to think about treatment options and, and drugs. Yes. Is that can I just say though, it is absolutely amazing that you can you know, use this magical technique which doesn't touch my head in any way, mm -hmm. there's nothing going inside, there's no contacts, and somehow you're able to magically measure the concentration of some particular chemical at a particular region in the brain. Like, that is pretty incredible. I'm glad you agree, because I think it's really cool as well. So, It's yeah, awesome. You know, it is. <laughs> nice like uh, it was a lot of um, nature documentaries and I absolutely loved because they were putting them on on the screen I love nature documentaries so I was, I was, just, I was just chilling out um, and there was like a lot of like sound as well there was sort of like this like dirt 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 sound um, like very monotonous and repetitive I thought you guys were playing me like the next like that new Kanye West album <laughs> I was like I, sounds familiar you know it's like uh, the noise so, of the scanner yeah yeah <laughs> Now, we couldn't actually show any images of my brain um, for you know various reasons, but I can assure you it was actually there, and no, it wasn't just too small that you couldn't see anything on the screen. I was my, really shocked that you, you had a brain, actually. I, I was also shocked. <laughs> um, so we'll have to wait until the research study comes out before we can, can show that. Um, but it did look pretty cool. It did yeah. look pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we okay. were just at the, the big brain machine. We're at the next experiment now. So what, what's happening? What are we doing now? Right, so as I said before, we use multi-modal imaging techniques to get a full picture of what's happening in the brain. So the MRI is really good for getting what's happening in local regions in the brain, but the EEG has another unique advantage. And Anna Maria, is the expert in this and she's going to tell you more. So an EEG is a neuroimaging technique that stands for electroencephalography. So the way we use the EEG is through caps like this. This is a high density cap. It has 128 channels and each channel or electrode is placed in the scalp to capture this electroactivity. It's not invasive, you cannot read mind. Or no. <laughs> It's basically like the heart exam, the, the electrocardiogram, where you go to the doctor to see how your heart's beating. The EEG measures electrical activity in the brain. So we know that the brain communicates through neurotransmitters and actual potentials, and they are basically just electric signals that when we have a large population of neurons firing at the same time in response to a certain stimuli, so let's say, press the button when you oh. hear the noise, 
we will be able to see the, those little waves or components as we call and they can be translated into cognitive processes. So this instrument does actually evaluate this electrical activity and the brain cells communicate with each other through these electrical impulses and that's how we can detect potential problems associated with this activity. So basically EEG tracks and records brain waves and there are particular neural signatures that are associated in OCD. Okay, so you're saying that with the, the brain waves that you measure with me and then a person with OCD are potentially going to have some sort of systematic differences yeah. that you'll be able to pick up um, and that's just going to allow you to, to build in the end a better understanding of how OCD works. Yeah. So we've done three experiments today. We've got the computer tasks, the MRS, and then the EEG. Yes. So what happens next? Okay, yeah, so we've collected data from different modalities, behavioral, some physiological, and brain imaging. So once we've collected data from more subjects, we'll then begin to analyze it and compare and relate behavior and the brain basis of this behavior and also contrast people with and without OCD. Right, and I guess you'll do that with, there'll be a lot of people in that study. So it's not, obviously not just me, no. but you'll get, you'll measure this on a lot of people and then. Yeah, so in um, psychology or neuroscience, cognitive neuroscience experiments, it's really important that we have good powers. That just means that we're able to actually make proper conclusions. So just looking at your brain isn't very informative. <laughs> but looking at many brains many together brains, yeah. and yeah. creating two separate groups, we'll be able to generalize our results more. Just before we finish, Mairead, mm -hmm. so if there's any uh, aspiring neuroscientists maybe watching this right now, is there anything you might say to them, any advice that you might give to help them become a neuroscientist just like yourself? <laughs> okay, so first of all, great choice and career. That's that's. <laughs> okay, obviously. I mean, neuroscience is, is pretty cool. Yeah, pretty if, cool. if not the coolest of all the sciences, if okay. I say so myself. Okay. I'm small but biased. Okay, okay, fair, fair. I mean, it's, it's definitely up there. I would probably be like top 20. Oh, oh, come top. on. <laughs> no, no. Top three. Top three at least. Okay, so one of the things that I would really recommend an aspiring neuroscientist or cognitive neuroscientist to really get stuck into is coding because a lot of the methodologies that we use require some coding and also kind of just different analysis techniques. We can really get some interesting and new, more detailed information that we weren't able to before. So it's a really useful skill to have. Okay, yeah. All right, learn to code. <laughs> Hey everyone, so that was my very first uh, YouTube video. I'm sure most people watching this probably already know me, probably because I, I forced them to watch it. But if you don't, I'm Alexander Sneed and I'm a physics PhD student here at Cambridge University. First off, uh, I just want to say massive shout out to Mairead for just being a great sport, an amazing star. Um, what you don't know is a lot of the shots, a lot of the ideas, a lot of the angles were actually hers. So. Massive thanks for that. Um, but onto the subject of, you know, what the hell am I actually doing? Um, I've always really been interested in the idea of science communication as a whole. And one day I thought, you know, why not stop telling people you're really into science communication and actually do it? So here we are. Don't know how well it's going to go. As you can see, there's a couple of uh, technical aspects I need to work out. But I figure if I'm having fun and learning something along the way, then you can't really go wrong. So the idea is I will be making videos which really explore what being a scientist is actually like and how science actually works in the real world. And I think this is you know, important for a lot of reasons. We live in a time when there's a lot of misinformation online, people don't understand science, people are afraid of science. So the more that can be done to bridge that divide, the better. So that's it from me. Um, if you want, you can subscribe to my channel. And if there's any particular realm of science, any particular topic uh, that you're interested in, 
let me know in the comments and I will make a video. Cheers.